how you can really improve your SharePoint Framework solutions utilizing the latest Microsoft Graph client in SharePoint Framework. So a little bit about me, I'm a SharePoint, I, I'm a recovering SharePoint dev, been a long time community member, uh, was awarded the MVP award six times before I joined Microsoft now six months ago, and I now work as a senior program manager on the Microsoft Graph team. A little bit of history here on why I wanted to kind of bring this sample that um, I built a couple of weeks ago to your attention. First, amazing that the SharePoint framework has been supporting the Microsoft Graph since 2018. So since in one of the early versions of, of SharePoint framework, I cannot remember exactly which one, maybe someone in the chat could uh, add it right there. SharePoint framework has been supporting the graph with the graph client, the graph factory uh, that is part of the of uh, everything uh, SharePoint framework does. And that's basically what uh, today Andrew and Nick have been using, right? Though, the current version is quite an old version of our Microsoft Graph SDK, which is the ver version 1.1. And things have evolved since the moment that this was included. And um, we've been working with partners and customers on how they could leverage the new functionalities of our JavaScript SDK straight inside the SharePoint framework. And that's kind of where this sample is coming from. First, why would you want to use the latest? Well, first, and I think that's the most important one, is to basically leverage its built-in middleware architecture. What does it mean? It means that right now, in the current version of the SDK that is in SPFX, you don't have retry handlers. You cannot create chaos in your apps and make sure that they're always well behaving under certain circumstances, especially when you're about to hit some throttling limits. So something really, really interesting here automatically handled throttling with the latest version of the graph. Also, you're going to get the latest types if you're more around building types and not just using a JavaScript object or JSON. You can use the types directly from there. You can get raw responses and not just um, uh, type responses. There's a bunch of content types that are really uh, in place for you instead of you putting all of them. So really useful when you're a developer and um, kind of a, a lazy dev like I am. I'm a lazy dev and I want to like use the most out of what an SDK can offer. So how will we accomplish this? Well, you know what? Let's close the, the slides um, uh, now and let's go through the actual code. First of all, we're going to have to upgrade, depending on which version of uh, your Rush compiler you've your, your had to uh, leverage some, some of the latest TypeScript capabilities uh, that are required because we are going to use for a second time today MGT, the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. Microsoft Graph Toolkit will be what will be providing the capabilities of having access to that latest version of the SDK. Um, so let's start. Let's start with the first code here. So basically, the first thing we're going to do is when our web part will get initiated or initialized, we will want to make sure that we set that our global provider, this is provided by the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. It is how you can assign kind of the, a provider. It can be an M style provider if you're working in, in regular React app. But when you're doing SharePoint stuff, you need to set it to the SharePoint provider in uh, by passing in the current web part context. MGT will do a bunch of different magic right there, including adding the right version of the SDK, making sure it's all authenticated for you so you don't have to go through any of the hoops of getting an access token to Microsoft Graph. It's going to respect all the scopes that are available in your SharePoint Online Administration uh, portal where you can see all the different API access that are being used or through the web parts that you want to deploy. Then afterwards, I have a super simple graph client here. It's uh, That's my component. It, there's literally nothing in there. A simple state, a, a, compon a component here that has one text field, a set, uh, that is the query or the API request you want to do, a text field of the number of requests you want to uh, emit to graph. Here it's going to be to emulate throttling. And here, a button that then will automatically start a query. So let's start with this. This here is the default graph client. That's how the calls have been made to graph uh, historically. So you get the graph client, you get the client, and once you get it, you can call 
um, the API and set a state. So let's go here and let's go see what it's in here. So let me reload that, that guy just to make sure we have everything. I'm going to do a, and here you're going to see on the right, it's going to showcase the different events. So basically, I just filter on events with status code equals 200. So the ones that are completing. So let me go here. Let me do slash me slash events. I'm going to hit run query. And now I got a 200. That's great. That's what we want. But now, if we want to go a little bit further and start challenging this, let's do, let's do the following now. Let's do something like I want to. Let me, I'm just going to uh, copy paste some code from a magic notepad that I have on the other screen. This here. This here, what it's going to do, it's going to iterate the number of time that I have in my number of requests and will emit these calls to Microsoft Graph using the Graph client. So what's going to happen? Let me save that. I'm just going to make sure that my uh, webpack has been working excellent. So now it's reloaded. And if I come here and I hit reload on this screen, I'm going to do exactly this call, but I'm going to do it a thousand times. Graph, especially on the on on some areas of graph, especially here on the mailbox, has some throttling limits. You cannot call graph a thousand times a second expecting to receive results. What you're going to receive is a what we call a 429, or we're going to tell you you're calling graph a little bit too much. Can you back off just a little bit and come back? to graph in a couple of seconds. So now if I emit this call a thousand times to graph, you're going to see a bunch of calls being emitted. And they're going to be emitted in, in, in one after the other. Um, and this is doing that in parallel because I'm using a map function here. This is going actually to run all of these in parallel, not sequentially. So we're not I'm not waiting for the previous call to complete. What's going to happen here is you're going to start to see quite soon a series of 429 happening here. And these 429s will not resume. You're going to get the request. You're going to get the errors. But the graph, the way that the current um, SDK that is built into SPFX is built, you're not going to get the retry that exists in the SDK. So let me just change that up and do exactly the same thing that I'm doing. And doing this. And now what I'm doing, instead of calling the, the previous graph client, I'm just going to bring in the, the last uh, here. Instead of using this MS graph client factory get client, I am going to use the global provider that I set earlier, dot graph dot API. And here I will be able to pass in the, the URL I want. That means here that this here will automatically manage the retry handling. Or you can even use, let's, sorry about that. You can even add some middlewares in here. So let me do this. I can, through the API here, I can add some middleware options. So it says here, I want you to wait five seconds and retry up to 10 times for each queries that will be in there. So it means that you can even instruct some customized version of that retry handling. Now, if I hit save, I'm going to do a, a small reload here. And now, yes, we will be having 429s. I will still be getting a couple of 429. That's what graph is all about. So that's what we want. But in the end, all the 1,000 queries that we're going to do on graph will indeed complete. So if we're looking at here and we look at the number of queries here, when it's going to end, we will be at 1,000 out of X number of requests compared to what we had um, earlier, which is just potentially 700 or 750. So if you're doing graph work with SPFX, I really recommend to use that approach. That way, you don't have to manage the 429s yourself. You can leave that to the SDK without really changing any type of code uh, in your stuff as it's basically all there for you. Really, really simple using the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. So that's what I wanted to share with you all today. All right, thank you very much, Seb, for that.